Well, for most of us, we really only think of plastic on recycling day, but the plastic you can see is only part of the problem. Yeah, the plastic you don't see in the air you breathe, the water you drink, even the food we eat may be an even bigger problem. Here's Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators. Kelsey, Randy, plastic is both a macro and micro problem, and both are related. We use more plastic than ever before and only recycle a fraction of it. But when that plastic breaks down and degrades, it never really goes away. Tonight, a crash course, if you will, on the science of plastic that sticks around in a billion little pieces. Yeah, I really want to get the kids into it. As any parent will tell you, I'm constantly thinking about it. There's always something to worry about. It comes up in my daily life all the time. For Mary Kosuth, even breakfast with her two kids, Oscar and Ingrid, is fraught with second guessing, right down to the cap on a bottle of syrup. Sometimes you have to get a knife in there and cut around, and I honestly wonder what might be falling in. It can seem like the world is wrapped in plastic. As you know, uh, plastic is everywhere, and so it's very difficult to avoid. Uh, we do the best we can. Her obsession with plastic is also an occupational hazard. She's a research scientist at the University of Minnesota, studying the tiniest bits and pieces of plastics known as microplastics. I tested snow from my backyard, um, and uh, and you know, Subsequently, I told my children, please don't eat the snow anymore, you know. It's when a special dye is added, the shards of plastic becoming bright red under a microscope. She's also found microplastics in tap water, beer, and salt. Even tiny plastic fibers attached to a wasp outside her lab. Other studies have identified microplastics in bottled water, tiny plastic microbeads from makeup and toothpaste, microfibers in the clothes we wear. It's even in the tea we drink. Researchers discovered some tea bags made from a fine plastic mesh shed more than 14 billion microscopic particles of plastic when hot water is added. It's really everywhere. So how are microplastics being found in almost every corner of the globe? A lot of it has to do with um, size. A microplastic is anything smaller than a pencil eraser. But most microplastics are much, much smaller. Take the tip of that pencil, divide it into a thousand equal parts. Bits and pieces of plastic invisible to the naked eye. Everywhere we've looked, we found them. At the Great Lakes Observatory in Duluth, a team of chemists is studying microplastics found in the stomach and intestines of fish caught in Lake Superior and along the beaches of the Apostle Islands. Microplastics were recently discovered in the pristine boundary waters, in the deepest waters of the Mariana Trench, as well as the Arctic Circle and even the Pyrenees. And yet their origin is still a mystery. These plastics are so small, scientists can't pinpoint one particular source. Is there a suspicion among scientists that a lot of this may be coming from the clothes we wear? It's not a suspicion. It's known that washers generate a lot of microplastic fibers. The concern isn't just the plastic itself, but chemical hitchhikers like PCBs. The plastics are great at sorbing on those, those molecules. They act like a really good sponge. The area that worries me is really small microplastics that can cross a, a gut barrier or a blood-brain barrier. And yet even the World Health Organization says the impact on humans is largely unknown that most microplastics may simply pass harmlessly through us, mostly. And yes, researchers have found microplastics in human feces. The smaller particles is where we may not have as much information about whether or not things are uh, actually going across uh, the gastrointestinal tract and getting absorbed that way. Wherever you turn today, there's pretty sure to be a modern plastic in use somewhere within sight. The first plastic polymers were discovered back in 1907 and production exploded after World War II. Because saran wrap keeps your fresh food fresh far longer. Today it's hard to imagine modern life without plastic. Plastics can even help save toddlers from trouble. 
Most of it made from petrochemicals that simply break down into smaller and smaller fragments, but never truly disappear. The world has produced nearly 8 billion tons of plastic, more than a ton for every human being alive. And there's no slowing down. Production of the most common plastic, polyethylene, is expected to grow by 40% in the next decade. One of mankind's greatest chemical innovations can feel like it's becoming our worst nightmare. They're removing uh, plastic film, which we do not want in the bin. Uh, it ends up plugging up our system and ultimately does not get recycled and ends up in the landfill. In Minnesota, we recycle only about 20% of our plastic. The rest goes to the incinerator or landfill. At the Demcon plant in Shakopee, a robot guided by artificial intelligence now helps sort plastic. But it's the consumer who could be doing more. Most plastic today is found in packaging of all kinds. But at the same point, uh, we have a lot of the single-use plastics and we're making choices uh, as consumers to purchase those products. So I think we need to focus more on using plastics that are recyclable. We try and put as much stuff as we, buy as much stuff in bulk as we can. Instead of plastic, Mary Koseth tries to store most of her bulk ingredients in glass. She takes single-use plastic bags back to the store for recycling. Small steps multiplied by millions of consumers, she believes, can make a big difference. But the scientist is convinced it's no longer just about the planet. It's also about our kids. What's worse? Is it this or climate change? Like, this is all just kind of bad stuff, you know? It's hard to, to weigh it, but we all just have to do the best we can, you know? There have been more than 4,000 studies on microplastics in just the last 20 years, but the field is really just gearing up in some ways. Last year, the Minnesota legislature authorized $800,000 to study microplastics in surface and groundwater in Minnesota. There's also some really promising research at the University of Minnesota into plastic polymers that can biodegrade. That's really interesting stuff. That may be part of the future. But one thing I got to tell you, if you can do one thing, take away one lesson tonight. These plastic, one-use plastic bags you get at the store, do not put them in with your regular plastics. They just gunk up the gears at the recycling centers. You have to take them back to the point of sale. And all the stores have a place where you can they drop do, off huh? your plastic bags. I don't it's think a lot of people to. realize that, that you can take those back to the store. I can't store. tell you how many times I've just thrown this into the regular mm -hmm. recycling. Bad, 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 bad. You also mentioned our clothes. What can we mm. do about that? You know, 60% of our clothes have some kind of plastic inside of them, and those tiny little fibers. There are some things you can do. There are some aftermarket filters that you can attach to your washer. There are some bags that you can put your clothes in that capture those microplastics. Mm. I, don't, I know you're not going to like this. You can also wash your, your, your clothes less. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's one, one option as well. Mm. Okay. There's some things you can do. And we have lots of links over at the Fox 9 app which, right. with some suggestions as well. Get you thinking. It was All a right. great story, but I feel a little scolded. You shouldn't feel scolded. <laughs> we, we need to work on this. Let's make up for lost time. I, I, think, I think we are on our way. We're all in the same boat there. Hopefully. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom.